you very let's, much. Let's take a look now at how the markets have been performing in Namibia and the Namibian overall index, which we do know is quite aligned with the South African market. Uh, let's see if that board can come up and it can tell you now it is pretty flat on the day, not 0.1%, 987.76 on the local currency front, which is the Namibian dollar, which is strongly aligned to the South African rand. Uh, that exchange rate at the moment trading at 278.95 flat on the day really not point not two percent let's cross over now to nbc in uh, vindugwe we talked to romeo mostet he's head of research at ijg uh securities romeo i saw a very stable market in the numbers that have just said that you know both on the currency as well as uh, on the stock side it doesn't look like there's much excitement in uh, any market at the moment Yes, um, yeah, we had a couple of results coming out over the last couple of weeks with both positive and negative surprises in there. Um, and I think we've been following overall sentiment from South Africa with Anglo-American holding back a bit, even retreating and your defensive um, stocks up a bit. So the market's quite offsetting each other. However, we also saw uptick in volume since February and still even in the beginning of March. So. Not a lot of excitement going on, but yeah. Sure. So let's talk about uh, some of the results that have come through. I mean, you have seen results coming through from Oryx Properties and then also Bitvest Namibia. Just your key takeaways from those two sets of results? Okay, basically, let's start with the bad news first. We saw um, Bitvest Namibia reporting some decreases in earnings. I think it was to the extent of 22%. This was despite strong growth in the revenue that came through with the inclusion of the TNC acquisition. Um, the reason for the decline in earnings was basically on the back of um, a drop in margins, um, on the back of the fishing segment that has been under pressure with new rights holders coming into the system and Bitvis now, now have to pay up for, in order to get a hold of TACs in the secondary market. So that has been very bad. Um, but in light of the earnings decreased, but they still managed to keep dividends unchanged from the previous year um, at 23 cents per share. Um, the big question, however, is will they be able to maintain dividends in, in the full year or will they have to, to let go a bit? Mm. Um, looking at Oryx properties, uh, good results coming out there. Just to, sorry? No, go on. Um, yeah, basically we saw distribution growth of 9%, um, which is pretty much in line with escalations that they, that they put through. Um, and uh, yeah, basically a good all-round um, re results. We saw vacancies drop to 0.4%, which is very impressive, um, um, yeah, just in an overall view. And if you talk to local retailers, there's quite a demand for, for retail space in Namibia. And considering Oryx properties exposure to to the Murua Mall and retail sector in general, I suspect that we will see the vacancy rate remaining quite low. Yeah, so I see now you have uh, taken a look at those numbers and you have updated your uh, target price for the stock and you're expecting a return of 15.8% uh, going forward. What kind of drivers are you seeing there? Um, Oryx Property is currently busy with construction um, on its Marua Mall um, building um, of premises and we expect some nice or strong GLA growth to come in there over the next year or so. Along, along with a 9% um, growth or escalation rate coming through, I suspect we can see some attractive growth in distribution. So um, with the growth in distribution, maybe just and, and, and interest rates remaining fairly unchanged over the next year, um, I suspect we can see a bit of capital appreciation along with the attractive 9.6% yield on the stock. Yeah, let's talk about uh, some company news. Now, SAB Namibia is starting construction uh, on their brewery at uh, Okahanja, and that's next month. I'd imagine uh, this must be causing a few shivers uh, at uh, the local brewers, including Namibia breweries. What kind of an outlook do you see here, potentially coming, as you have, uh, a big gorilla in the form of SAB into a very small market like uh, Namibia? Yes, um, I don't think we will expect SAB to come and kill Nambrus on a price from a price perspective in Namibia. I think the, the building of the brewery is more 
focus towards entering the African markets um, through this brewery. Um, a, about 18 months ago, we saw a, a steep price increase in all SAB's products in Namibia, um, which was a bit contrary to what we would have thought if, if it would have been expected to be price competitive. So basically, the, the brewery would be built at a 150 US dollars per hectolitre, which compares to um, Nambrus's market cap um, and EV2 hectolitre of about 120 US dollars per hectolitre. So I would say this is supportive for valuation, first of all, and it maybe shows SAB's interest in a market that has strong disposable growth or disposable income growth coming through with recent tax cuts being released and in general strong demand figures all over the Namibian economy. So I think it's more a reflection of the, the overall wealthiness of our consumer and maybe getting exposure to that consumer.